This is Math 99, Section 2.6. We're going to talk about solving equations that are in quadratic form. So you know how to solve quadratic equations. Quadratic equations uh, come in this form. Um, ax squared plus x plus c equals 0. And so quadratics, you know, they have an x squared in them, but nothing larger. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to recognize equations that aren't quadratics, but they're in a quadratic form. I'll tell you what that means in just a minute, but it allows us to use all of our factoring techniques to solve. So as I look at this equation, uh, x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 equals 0, I notice it's not a quadratic. It has an x to the fourth in it, but I can see that it's in a quadratic form because notice what I have is uh, this middle term is an x squared, and this is basically that x squared squared. So I do have, like, I could think of this as x squared squared, that's x to the fourth, minus 5x squared plus 4 equals 0. Now, it's not a quadratic, but it's in a quadratic form in the sense that this middle thing is just an x. This is that thing squared. This middle thing is an x squared. This is that thing squared. So sometimes what we do is we um, kind of trick ourselves a little bit. Um, you don't have to necessarily do this, but it helps. I'm going to say uh, let A equal X squared. So A is just going to be a placeholder. I'm kind of entering this little different world here where I can rewrite this then as instead of X to the fourth, instead of X squared squared, I could just write this as A squared minus 5. Instead of X squared, I'll say A plus 4 equals 0. So what I've done is I've, I've rewritten this thing that's in, it's not a quadratic, but it's in a quadratic form, middle term uh, variable, middle variable squared as this. And then I can just treat this like it's just a quadratic and solve it. And then I'll worry about what the actual answers are after I do that. So things that uh, multiply to 4 add to negative 5, uh, negative 1 and negative so I can rewrite this as uh, a minus 1 times a minus 4 equals 0. So what makes this a 0, 1? What makes this a 0, 4? So a equals 1 and a equals 4. That's great. But I don't want to solve for a. I want to solve for x. So I know that a is x squared. So that means if, uh, if a equals 1, x squared must equal 1. In other words, I can put the x squared back in for the a. Notice that A was just a placeholder to allow me to do some quadratic work. It's almost like I entered this little fever dream and then I could awaken from it. A is equal to 1. Oh, that means x squared is equal to 1. And so on. And so if x squared is equal to 1, I can square root both sides. x equals plus or minus square root of 1, which is just 1. Square root both sides here. x equals plus or minus square root of 4, which is 2. So my answers are... Uh, this gives me negative 2, this gives me a negative 1, this gives me a positive 1, this gives me a positive 2. So I have four answers for it. That's the idea behind this quadratic form. So taking a look at this next one, I know it's not a quadratic, but I notice I have an x cubed, and then I have an x to the sixth, which is x cubed squared. So x to the sixth is this. So how about I do my substitution again? I'll just use a. Just let a equal x cubed. And again, this is just a little, little trick uh, for myself so that I can rewrite this in a, in a more friendly form. If a is x cubed, I can rewrite this as a squared minus 7a minus 8. Well, I know how to solve that. Things that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 7, 1 and negative 8. I hit it right off the bat, 1 and negative 8. So this factor is a uh, plus 1, a minus 8 equals 0. So according to my zero product property, what makes this a 0? Negative 1. So a equals negative 1, a equals 8. And that was great. I know how to do that. But then I have to uh, awaken from this dream. I'm not solving for a. I'm solving for x. So if a is equal to negative 1, x cubed is equal to negative 1. So I substitute that x cubed back in there. 
get each of those, I'll, I'll cube root them. The cube root of negative one is negative one. The cube root of eight is two. There's my answers. All right, I have a couple more examples like this that I'm going to. Okay, so not quadratics, but in a quadratic form, I notice that here I have x to the one third, and if I square that, that's x to the two thirds. So this is basically, not just basically, it, it is x to the one third squared. So I'll do my substitution. I'll let a equal x to the one third power. So if I substitute that in, I've got a squared plus 4a plus 2 equals 0. And now if I try to factor this, I'm not going to be able to factor it. Like that's not factorable. I can't get things that multiply to 2, but, uh, but add to 4. So I'm going to run this through quadratic formula. Uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of a b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And that square root of 8 is 2 root 2, so I can write this as this. All right, but I'm not solving for a, I'm solving for x. So x to the one third power. So let me plug that back in. And the way that I can undo the one third power is by cubing it. So I take both sides to the third power. I'm just going to write my answer as it is. And that can be my answer right there. Here's another example. Um, 3x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 1. Again, I notice it's not a quadratic, but it is in a quadratic form. I have an x squared, and this is x squared squared. So I could think of this as this. So I'll enter my little dream. Uh, let a equals x squared. Just using a because it's there. I could use anything I wanted. Substitute it in. And let me go to factor this. And I notice my leading coefficient isn't 1, so I'm going to use that AC method. So A times C, 3 times negative 1 is negative 2. So I want things that multiply to negative 3, add to negative 2. It looks like negative 1 will do that for me. And I remember in this method, you're breaking up that middle term into those pieces. So this becomes 3A squared minus 3A plus A minus 1 equals 0. I can factor out a 3 from the first two terms, so a 3a from the first two terms. And in the second two terms, there's nothing to factor out, it looks like. How about I factor out a 1? So now I can factor out that a minus 1. So if I think about zero product property, what makes this a 0? Positive 1. Set this equal to 0, subtract 1, divide by 3, negative 1 third. So a is equal to those things. But I'm not solving for a, I'm solving for x. And I let a equal x squared. So I'm going to substitute that x squared back in. So x squared equals 1, and x squared equals negative 1 third. Um, so square root 1, uh, and I have a plus or minus. So this is going to give me uh, negative 1 and 1. If I square negative 1 third, that's going to give me an i. So how about I just say negative, I'll leave it as root one-third i, and positive root one-third i. And I'm okay with leaving it in that form. Um, you, you, the answer book might write something like this, root three over three i, which is equivalent. But this answer is good. All right, one more example I want to do like this. All right, so if you're solving this, you could like multiply this out, square this, distribute that negative four, and then try and factor it. But I'm going to take advantage of that this is actually in a quadratic form. Notice I have this middle term of x minus five and this first term of x minus five squared. So let's let a equal x minus five. So clever. So I have a squared minus four a minus 21 equals zero. Go to factor that, negative uh, seven and three. So from there, I can say that a is 7 or negative 3, right? What makes this a 0? What makes this a 0? 
but got to wake up from my little substitution dream. I'm not looking for A, I'm looking for X. So that means X minus five equals those things. X minus five equals seven, and X minus five equals negative three. So I can solve those, add five over here, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Add five over here and two, there's my values. And if I'm ever not sure if I'm right, plug it back in. Plug 12 back in for x, this will evaluate to a zero. Plug two back in for x, this will evaluate to a zero. All right, give those problems a go and uh, see how it feels. Post questions in the forum or message me.